still laboring under the old idea that Volvos are basically Birkenstocks on wheels, it's time to change into your Puma. Let's drive this 2015 Volvo S60 T6 and check the tech. Quite a bit of it. Now an S60 is a svelte, rather un-Volvo looking Volvo. You don't see those big square angles and broad shoulders that Volvos typically have, and a lot of the other ones still do. This is kind of a three series competitor, so they've got to get it right in terms of style, not just function. One thing you'll notice very lately on this car is a new front clip, kind of from here forward. They've reshaped the face, a more aggressive, larger grille, and recontoured fenders and hoods. A nice looking front end on this car. Something else I want to call your attention to, this may be the most cameras I see on a car these days. There looks to be at least four lenses in three positions here. Later on, we'll see what those are for, but this car has perhaps the most amazing level of driving assistance tech and awareness at this price point. Now, inside the S60, you're finding a very modern interface. There's more than I could say for some previous Volvos. Look what's missing. No more of that kind of crunchy monochrome LCD 8-bit graphic look that they had for years. Everything is beautifully rendered LCD. This is one of the most cohesive cockpits on the market today. Let's go to the instrument panel. That's what's really new. You've got video throughout. There's not one moving needle on the whole thing. The gauges on the left side and around the bottom are always in that position. Your fuel level, your gear position, your shift status range to empty, things of that nature. But if you hit this button on the left stalk, you can change into three personalities. There's one that is elegant, there's one that's eco, and there's one that's performance. A couple things I've never seen before. Notice how the turn signals are rendered in video. And this one down here that shows your instantaneous MPG, when you come to a stop, it does something else new. It changes to gallons per hour because that's the relevant calculation when you're not moving. Very clever, not very useful, but very clever. And of course, you have auto start stop technology that should make that zero unless you defeat it like I do. We'll talk more about that later. What's not on our car, unfortunately, is the census system. This is their connected and apps based layer that goes on top of what you see in the center screen. It lets you find restaurants, that's pretty common. Stream music, same thing, handle and dictate texts. It's also got a module to find and pay for parking. That's kind of a new wrinkle. Shifting is one choice only. You've got an eight-speed automatic on this car now. Straight PRND gate for manual. Come on back and kick it over here for sport automatic or initiate a shift from there or the paddles and now you're in sport manual mode and also in a faster shift mode. The transmission becomes quicker and more twitchy. And optionally, a rear view camera. I said optional, that's right, but it's going to have a lot going on. You've got distance, you've got trajectory, and you've also got sonar overlaid visually as well as audibly. So it's a very comprehensive backup system. You can also option a front camera. I don't find those real useful. Now up here in the engine bay, Volvo is doing some really interesting things. This is not a small car, but it's got an inline two liter four cylinder. But hold on, they start to stack on the power generating tech. It has both a supercharger and a turbocharger. The supercharger, of course, is belt driven. It works great at low RPMs, delivering boost right off the get. Then later on, the turbocharger takes over sort of mid RPM on up when it can use all the free energy that comes off that exhaust. Gets rid of turbo lag, gives you boost at all parts of the rev range, which a two liter needs with a car this size. Horsepower is 306 out of that combo. Torque is 295 respectable foot pounds. Zero to 60 is 5.9 for a car that weighs over two tons by a bit. MPG is 2435, also a nice highway number. By the way, though, this car wants premium for sure. You can also get this powertrain in an S60 with all-wheel drive, but you've got to step up to the much pricier R-Design level. We'll put a sticker on that later. Now, the main driving trait of the S60, uh, the power is what's so interesting. They really have dialed out a lot of that low-end initial tip-in lag or turbo lag by, of course, having a blower, a supercharger that starts first and the turbo that takes over. The result is, I got to tell you, I was shocked that this was a 2-liter 4. When I was first driving it and imagining what engine it must have under it, that would not have been my guess. So that's a compliment. It doesn't make a very nice sound, neither the exhaust nor the engine itself. I think they've missed an opportunity there. 
and getting into the sport mode here and shifting yourself makes a very noticeable and, and measured difference. So they have a nice delineation of their different personalities on this engine. Good for them. On the other hand, the ride quality is, what's the word? Awful. It just translates everything too literally. If the road goes could chunk one inch, the car goes could chunk one inch. That's not what a suspension's supposed to do. It's supposed to modulate that. But the handling's tight. The car feels lighter than its weight on paper, I'll tell you that, and that's always a good thing. I've gotten a little more used to these seats, but man, they're just too narrow and they're not adjustable. I'm a big guy, I'm 6'2", over 205, and these seats are just annoying. It's like someone who's sitting next to you at the theater and they're touching you the whole time. It just irks me. You may like that, I don't. And I gotta say, the more I drive this car, the more I love the cohesive beauty of this cockpit. This is one of the most well thought out, really beautiful cockpits on the road at any price. Leave it to the Swedes, right? They know how to do that. Now all S60s have city safety standard. That means the car will stop itself when it detects a rear end collision at up to now 31 miles per hour, a higher speed level. On top of that, they've now layered cyclist and pedestrian detection, which they say will pick up the presence of a bike or a pedestrian stepping into your path, at least from your direction of travel. And again, up to full braking will be applied. The headlights are automatic, but they default to high beam and then when there's an oncoming car, they cut out part of the beam pattern, but try not to turn off the high beams entirely. Those front lights, of course, are also steerable, but now they also have auto-switching cornering lights that come on and off as you turn very tightly. Blind spot and cross-traffic alert tech, nothing new there, except now the rear-facing radar looks further, so it can detect fast-approaching cars that are about to be in your blind spot. And one of those cameras in the windshield reads speed limit signs. It then puts a little mini speed limit sign on your speedometer and puts a little red puck at the speed on the dial. Makes it easy to index the needle to what you should be doing, or at least how much you're exceeding what you should be doing. Okay, let's price our S60. We're starting off now at a little over 39,000 delivered. If you want all wheel drive, as I mentioned, it gets pricey because it's part of an r design sport package, 4,500 bucks plus. CNET style, premium package is the big one. Little over three grand for rear cam, navigation, power mirrors, premium Harman Kardon sound, and a home link garage door opener. 1400 gets you the blind spot technology and the active parking. The tech package is 1500 adaptive cruise, lane departure technology, forward collision technology with that cyclist and pedestrian awareness. The one I wish we had was the census infotainment system for almost 1900 and 800 more if you want the bi-xenon headlights, which with this intelligent headline technology kind of makes sense to me. We're pushing $48,000 now. The S60 is mostly strong on its amazing drive and awareness techniques. It does things that few other cars do in a roll-up like that. On the other hand, I found the ride quality to be eh, the engine note to be kind of eh as well, but the power delivery is great with that turbo and supercharger combination, and I think it looks good.